Hey guys, I'm Tom, the tech chap, and this is the beautiful new MSI GS65 Stealth Thin, which, as it says on the tin, is a thin and light gaming laptop with a 144 hertz refresh rate display, the latest eighth generation i7 processors. And I've got to say, I think this is the best looking laptop MSI have ever made. Before we jump into the review, it would be amazing if you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next videos. And I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at the Tech Chap if you want to see more awesome behind the scenes stuff. So this is actually the cheapest model of the GS65. I say cheap, but it'll still set you back 1,900 pounds. That's the same in dollars. And for that, you get the six core i7 8750H processor, a full fat GTX 1060 graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. But if you fancy a little bit more power, you can pay a couple of hundred quid more and get this with the fast GTX 1070 Max-Q graphics card. So it's definitely not cheap, but I do think you're getting a lot for your money. There are plenty of laptops out there that come with a 1060 or a 1070, and even a fair few now with the latest 8th gen processors. But not many of them look this good, or more importantly have the ridiculously smooth 144Hz refresh, which makes going back to any other laptop just feel slow and old fashioned in comparison. If you've ever used a higher than 60 hertz refresh monitor, you know what a huge difference it makes, even just on the desktop or web browsing, but especially in games, which feels buttery smooth. And I do think it gives you an advantage when you're playing competitive games like Fortnite, Overwatch, or PUBG. Having said that, if you're not getting 144 frames per second in games, then you're not really taking full advantage of the refresh rate. In Far Cry 5 with ultra settings, the GS65 averaged 68 FPS. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, again at ultra, we get 75 FPS. So we are still seeing a benefit over a 60 hertz screen, but depending on the games you play and the settings you use, it's gonna be tricky to fully utilize that 144 hertz when you've got a 1060 in here. So I think the best option really is to pay a little bit more and get the model with the 1070 Max-Q, which is about 20% faster. But I still think it's very impressive to see the kind of performance you can get out of this, considering just how portable and compact it is. As I say, this will comfortably get you over 60 FPS in the latest games with ultra settings at 1080p, and yet it's less than 18 millimeters thick. It weighs just 1.88 kilograms or 4.1 pounds, which is about the same as the MacBook Pro 15 and actually lighter than the Dell XPS 15. And even with a 15.6 inch screen, because of the super thin bezels around the top and the edge, it means actually the whole laptop is in a 14 inch laptop chassis. There's a really good selection of ports as well. There's pretty much everything you'd need, including a USB-C Thunderbolt 3, HDMI 2.0, mini display port, three USB 3.1s, separate headphone and mic ports, ethernet and power. My only complaint though is a lack of an SD card reader, which is a bit of a shame. And as someone who makes videos all day long, that is a little bit frustrating, although I can always just use a USB adapter. As for the screen itself, it is an IPS grade panel, so viewing angles are good, and it's reasonably color accurate too, covering 99% of the sRGB and 77% of the Adobe RGB color gamuts. It's also a matte panel, which I have to say I do prefer as you get fewer reflections, and it's pretty bright as well at around 300 nits, which is about average for laptops like this. But in terms of response time, we're looking at about seven milliseconds gray to gray, which is a little slow for pro gamers, but for most of us, that's absolutely fine. You wouldn't notice the difference. And I'd rather have that, the seven milliseconds response, with an IPS screen, rather than a faster response time with a TM panel, and then you're giving up the viewing angles and the color accuracy. One complaint I do see people making about this is that it doesn't support G-Sync, which would be nice, but not only would that add to the price, but it also means you then can't get Optimus graphics switching. So the 1060 or the 1070 Max-Q would always be running, even if you're just in the web browser or watching a Netflix movie. So really you'd only get two or three hours of battery life. Without G-Sync and when you're not connected to the power, it uses its integrated chip on the processor, which means in real world use, we're looking at around five and a half hours of battery from the 82 watt hour cell, which is definitely less than the eight hours that MSI say you'll get on this little sticker here, but it's not too bad at all for a gaming laptop. But I do wanna talk about just how good this thing looks. MSI have traded their signature black and red color scheme for a classy black and gold trim. It's a legitimately sharp looking laptop and would fit in just as easily at the office or a LAN party. What I would say though is that the metal chassis does smudge quite easily 
Uh, I'm always having to wipe off my greasy fingerprints and smudge marks. Build quality is okay. There's a fair amount of flex though, especially around the keyboard and the palm rest, which gives it a bit of a flimsy feel overall. There's also a little bit of creaking. Not sure if you can hear that. It doesn't come across particularly well built. And there's also a fair bit of screen wobble here. So yeah, as I say, I guess the word flimsy is what I would go for. It's far from a deal breaker, but it does take away a little bit from what is otherwise a really premium looking laptop. The keyboard and the touchpad are really nice to use though. And even though the touchpad is using Synaptics rather than Microsoft Precision drivers, it's smooth, responsive, and it feels good. I'd say it's better than the Gigabyte Aero 15X's touchpad and has similar quality to the Dell XPS 15. The Steel Series Chiclet keyboard is great to type on and you get per key RGB backlighting, which is fully customizable through MSI's pre-installed software, as well as their famous Dragon Sensor, which lets you keep an eye on temperatures and performance. You can create custom profiles and adjust fan speeds. So for example, if you wear headphones when you play games, which I think most people do, you could go into the Dragon Sensor and put this fan speed into cooler boost mode. Makes it pretty loud, we're looking at about 53 decibels, but it's ideal for keeping everything cool during longer gaming sessions. And if you've got your headphones on, you're not really gonna notice. Now I do tend to leave it in auto mode most of the time, and generally when you're just doing really basic tasks, it's pretty much silent, which is really good to see. And when you're playing games, the maximum I recorded was around 44 decibels, which is still reasonably loud, but it's on par with most other gaming laptops. One thing I would say though is it does get quite warm. I measured 56 degrees coming out the bottom here. So if you're using this on your lap, then your legs are gonna get a little bit toasty. But then again, if it's on the desk, it doesn't really matter. And the good news is the palm rest and the keyboard doesn't get particularly warm at all. As I say, this is the entry level model. And one issue I do have with it is there's just not enough storage. It comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD. You can really only fit three, maybe four games on there. Ideally, if you can, pay a bit more and get the model with a 512 gig SSD. Elsewhere, the webcam's actually pretty decent and somehow, despite the really thin bezel, they have managed to cram it on the top bezel here, unlike the XPS 15 or the Gigabyte Aero, which is down here, so it's a much better placement and quality is fine. As for the speakers, they're actually very good, surprisingly good. You get a couple of bottom firing speakers and depending on the surface, it can muffle them a little bit, but overall, I found them to be loud, punchy, and definitely better than most gaming laptops. So should you buy the GS65? Well, it's not perfect. It's expensive, build quality is a little questionable, more storage on the base model would be nice, as well as an SD card reader, and with the 1060, you're not really getting high enough frame rates to take full advantage of the 144Hz screen. Although for esports games like Dota, League, and CSGO, you'll definitely feel the difference. But despite that, I would still recommend it. Performance is excellent, the high refresh rate screen is just so smooth, and honestly, any other laptop just feels rubbish in comparison, especially when it comes to playing games. It's got a solid keyboard and touchpad, and it's just a great all-rounder, offering both power and portability. Now, I've put links in the description below if you want to find out more about this, or maybe even buy one, and I'd love to hear what you think. Would you buy something like this? Do you like the look of it? Do you think MSI's black and gold color scheme is actually a little bit nicer than the black and red? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching guys. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. And also if you wanna see more from me, do hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you don't miss any. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time right here on The Tech Chat.